First question is how hard do you have to hit your head to get a concussion? Kind of a trick question because you don't actually have to hit your head to get a concussion. Concussion from is, is a result of acceleration and deceleration of the brain inside the skull. So obviously the easiest way in which the brain can undergo acceleration or deceleration is to receive a direct impact to the head. However, if you're in a motor vehicle accident or even if you're hitting the body, let's say you're tackled playing you know, rugby or football and somebody hits you in the body and your head whips back and forth, even though there's no direct contact with your head, your brain is still undergoing some amount of acceleration and deceleration within the skull. Obviously a direct impact will likely accelerate your head to a greater degree, which is why concussions tend to be associated with hits to the head. But what I always say is you don't have to be hit in the head to get a concussion. Concussion is the result of the brain moving inside the skull. So, but to answer the question of how hard that you need to be hit, um, a lot of the study has been done using instrumented helmets in football players. The camera turned on me. Um, using instrumented helmets in football players, um, they have these accelerometers that will be placed within the helmet to measure the degree of acceleration and deceleration during impacts. Anytime a hit happens, it registers to a computer system which kind of takes those readings and looks at the various angular and linear accelerations to the head. Now, if a concussion occurs and somebody experiences symptoms and they come off and they have that concussion confirmed, they'll look back at the data to see to try and see which impact caused that concussion injury. And from then they can start to develop these ranges of where concussion tends to occur. And the majority of those studies uh, have found that concussion tends to happen between 70 and 120 Gs of linear acceleration. Okay, Gs is the force of gravity and I'll give you some context around that in a second. And then also 5,500 up to 10,000 rads per second squared, which is rotational acceleration. Um, those studies have some flaws, however, because measuring acceleration of the helmet doesn't necessarily mean acceleration of the brain, right? Because the helmet is loosely fitting on the head, so if the helmet goes, undergoes a tremendous amount of acceleration, that may not actually indicate the amount of acceleration the head is undergone. But it can give us some idea as to what those forces might be. There's also things that weigh into this equation such as the duration of impact um, as well as like the magnitude itself which is kind of a combination of those things. Um, so to put in perspective 70 to 120 G's uh, we don't really have good comparisons for rotational acceleration but let's use the linear acceleration of g-forces. A sneeze is three and a half G's uh, chew. Okay, so that motion generally will generate about three and a half G's. These studies that I'm talking about with these football helmets, they don't even register until you surpass 10 G's. So they're not even looking at, you know, the little sneezes or the little kind of, you know, bumps and stuff. They're looking at, you know, an actual 10 G or so impact. The majority of football tackles, over 75% of those tackles are under 30 G's so well below the threshold needed for concussion injury. If you look at things like heading a soccer ball, okay, heading a soccer ball is between 18 and 22 Gs depending on the age and the study that you look at. So again, the average soccer header is well below concussion threshold, right? You're talking 70 to 120 Gs. But that again is helmet, there's all sorts of questions about that. Um, a car accident in which your airbags deploy. So your airbags are set to deploy at a change of velocity of about 50 kilometers an hour or for you Americans 30 miles per hour. So if you're driving 50 or 30 miles per hour kilometers per hour and you rear end somebody the change in velocity of 30 to 50 of coming to a dead stop will cause your airbags to deploy. That has been found to translate into about 60 G's through the seat belt. Okay, so what happens to the head after that remains to be known, whether it hits the headrest or hits the steering wheel or et cetera, et cetera, um, or those nicely deflated airbags that are there to protect you. Um, we don't really know what happens to the head, but there is some data to show that about 60 G's through the seat belt at the point of airbag deployment.
So 70 to 120 G's is a tremendous amount of force. Um, so it's not like every little bump in, and bruise is causing a concussion, right? 75% of the impacts in football, as I said before, are under 30 G's. You know, soccer headers between 18 and 22 G's. Very, very low force production when you consider the magnitude that uh, a lot of the research has shown for concussions, okay? So that's kind of a general overview of how hard you have to be hit to have a concussion. But again, that hit doesn't necessarily have to hit you in the head. You could be hit in the body. You could fall on your bum and get a concussion. Um, and I know some people that have had that happen. Um, so just to kind of squash that one, don't have to be hit in the head. And uh, the range is somewhere between 70 to 120 Gs. However, there are varying studies and conflicting studies uh, that may challenge that notion. But the majority of studies has been done in these football helmets, and that's kind of where they find that range to be.